This video is part of our course on PySite 6 for widgets, which is on Udemy. The course goes from the absolute beginning, showing you how you can take advantage of cute widgets using the Python API under the PySite 6 or a cute for Python umbrella. And it covers things you really need on a daily basis, signals and slots, a bunch of widgets you can use. We show you how to use Qt Designer. At the end, we also show you how to work with networks and the model view architecture. If you are interested, be sure to check the link in the description below. In this lecture, we are going to learn about signals and slots in Qt. And a signals and slots are a mechanism that Qt provides to connect things. In other words, when something happens, we want to respond in some other part of our code. Suppose on the left here, we have a push button and we want to do something when that button is clicked. The way we do that, we set up a piece of code that is going to respond to the right here. And when the button is clicked, Qt is going to emit a signal. This signal is going to be picked up by whoever might be interested in this button being clicked and they are going to respond. The mechanism Qt provides allows us to connect signals to slots. And when you have made this connection, when somebody clicks on the button, the method that is responsible for responding is going to respond and do whatever it is you do in the body of that method. Suppose we are printing a message. Whenever you click on the button, we are going to print a message. Whenever you click on the button, we are going to print a message. And Qt provides a simple syntax to allow us to do that. Let's look at that. Here I have a piece of code and what I am setting up here is a simple button. You can see that right here and we want to respond when this button is clicked. We say that we want to respond in this piece of syntax you see here. So we say button, the name of the variable, we say dot and then we say the signal that we want to respond to. In this case, the signal's name happens to be clicked. And once we do this, we are going to call the connect method on this. And when we say connect, we are going to specify the method that is going to respond to this button being clicked within this parenthesis here. In this case, it happens to be button clicked. If you look on top here, we have this method. We are defining it. And in the body of this method, we are just saying a message, you clicked on the button. So this is what we are doing here. We are connecting a slot or a method that is going to respond when this button is clicked. And uh, this is what does this connection here. So some of you must be asking, Daniel, how did you know that we have this clicked signal on our button? And uh, this is another instance of where you need to use the documentation. So we are interested in the Q push button component. We want to see which kind of signals this component emits. Let's go to our search engine pretty fast. So let's close all this here and we are going to say Q push button for Qt for Python. And if we do that, we will have the documentation for a Q push button. If you click on more, it is going to tell you everything about this component. But what we really want is to see the signals that this component emits. And if you go down in here, we see synopsis functions, virtual functions, slots. So this is a slot you can activate if you want to do something like this. But we don't see any signal from this component. And this is because all of these signals are coming from a parent class of this push button component. And that happens to be what you see here, this little thing called the Q abstract button. The documentation for Qt for Python is not really good. For example, we can't scroll around to see the things that are cropped off. But we are lucky in this instance, we can see Q abstract button. If you click on this, this is going to open the documentation for Q abstract button. If you click on more, it's going to tell you what this does. It is going to implement an abstract button and all kinds of buttons we have in Qt are going to be inheriting from this button here. But again, what we are interested in are the signals that might be emitted by this component. Again, we see functions. If we scroll down, we're going to see virtual functions. If we go down, we're going to see slots we can activate. If we go down, we're going to see signals. And this is what we are interested in. So the Q push button component can emit a signal to let us know that it is clicked. 
it can emit to let us know it is pressed, it is released, it is toggled, and we can do all kinds of crazy things. We can even grab these arguments or these parameters and use them to do things in our Qt for Python applications. So let's go back to our slides. Now that you know where I got the information that we have this clicked signal, so we have connected to it. And then after we do this connection and start the application, when we click on the button, we're going to see the message from our method here. And this is going to be really cool. So we are just responding when we click on the button and we know the syntax we use to do that. And this is really cool. We can go even further and grab the parameter that is emitted by the signal. For example, if you go back to our documentation in the browser, you're going to see that the clicked signal can emit a parameter to let us know whether the button is checked or not. We're going to take advantage of this and show you how to handle parameters and signals. We can go back to the slides. And what we are doing here, after we set up the button, we're going to make it checkable. And this is going to make it toggle its state whenever we click on it. So if we click on it first, it's going to be checked. If we click on it again, it's going to be unchecked. And it is really going to be simulating the behaviors we have with checkboxes. If you click on a checkbox, it's going to be checked. You click on it again, it's going to be unchecked. And it is basically going to be toggling between these two states. That's what we are simulating here with our Q push button component. But we are doing this because we know when it emits the clicked signal, it can also give us information whether it is checked or not. And we are going to be printing that state in this print statement here. So we, we are just going to say print and we are going to print the data parameter that we get in this function here. And we are just doing the usual connection we did before. Notice we are saying button clicked connect and we are activating the button clicked method whenever this button is clicked. And that method happens to be on top here. So this is something we can do. We can respond when something happens and grab the data that was sent to us by the signal and use that in our method. And this is really cool. Let's look at another example before we head over to Visual Studio Code and play with us here. We are going to use a slider. So we will set up a slider component. And again, this is something we have in Qt. This is going to be something like this, where you have a slider that you can slide around to increase or decrease values. We are going to give it a minimum, a maximum, and a value. And whenever we move the slider, the slider is going to emit signals that its value is changing. And uh, because I checked the documentation, I know that the slider has a value changed signal. Let's go to the documentation and really show you this. You should be able to find things out on your own in the documentation. Let's say Q slider. And if we open this up in another tab, we are going to see all about this component. You can read about this here, but we are interested in signals that it might emit and we don't see. Okay, if we go down here, we're going to see that this slider is going to inherit a comprehensive set of signals. And among these signals, we have a value changed. Okay, if we click on this, we are going to see that this signal is going to pass a value to us and we can grab this value and do things with it in our Qt for Python applications. So this is what we are doing in the slides here. We are grabbing that value, okay, and printing that out in our print statement here. And all this is happening because of the connection we did here. So whenever the value changes, we want to call this method to respond to the slider moving, and we will grab the current value from the slider and do things with it. Now that you know all this, and again, I realize it is a lot of information, but we're going to go through this step by step in Visual Studio Code, and I hope you are going to understand. So let's go there and play with us. Okay, here we are in Visual Studio Code. We have an empty folder in which we will be doing our thing. Let's grab and drag on top of Visual Studio Code to open this, and we will create our main Python file, main.py, and this is going to give us our starting point. The first thing we are going to do is to put in version one of our application here. And again, I am not going to type all this. We are just importing the components we need. We are setting up a method that is going to respond when the button is clicked. We are setting up our application object, the button. 
And we are doing the most important thing here. Let's take out the line and do the connection ourselves. So we are saying button whenever the button is clicked. And you see that we don't have autocomplete here. So we have to autocomplete the signal and then connect. That's what we do. And we want to specify the thing that is going to respond when this button is clicked. So that's going to be button clicked here. Now we have the connection made and we are just going to show the button here. Notice that all we have in our application here is a simple button. So this is what we are going to see when we run this application here. Let's bring up our terminal window and we will simply run this just like we did other applications. And when we do that, we see a little window pop up that is saying press me. So this is our button inside this window here. And if we click on it, you see it's going to print the message. And it is doing that because of the connection we did here. Let's close this and comment out this connection to show you that if we don't make the connection, we won't see this message when we click on the button because there is no connection between this button whatsoever to this slot here or this method, if I can say it like that. Let's run it again to see this going on. We have the button. And if I click on it a thousand times, I'm not going to see a single message here unless I come back in my code and activate the connection and run the application again. Then we will see the button. And if we click on it, we're going to see things happening as a response to the connection that we did here. This is really the syntax. Again, how do I know we had this clicked signal? I use the documentation. Let's go down and show you that you can also handle parameters or arguments coming in your signals. Let's comment this out. So we have this done here and we will put in version two of our code. Let's go down and uncomment this. Let's take out my block comment here. And again, notice that we have a parameter in our slot here and we don't have any mention of that parameter because the clicked signal is going to send it anyway. It is our decision to decide whether we handle it or not. That's what we are doing here. So we have the parameter and we're going to be printing the checked state. And to be able to toggle between the checked and not checked state, you have to enable that on your button component. And that's what we are doing here, setting checkable to true. Once you have this, you can run the application and you are going to see that as you click on the button, it is going to be constantly toggling between the checked and unchecked state. Let's run this. We can go to view and a terminal and run this again. But before we do, I think we need to kill the application that was running earlier. So let's clear and bring up our application. If we click press me, it is going to check. It is going to say checked true. We click again, checked false. We click again, checked true. And this is happening because a behavior that is built into this button component is that if you click on it, while you have this property set to true, it is going to be constantly toggling between checked and unchecked. That's what we can do here. And again, the real intent in this example is to show you that you can handle parameters that come in your slots and the syntax you use to connect doesn't really change. You decide whether you handle them or not by putting the parameter in here. If you put the parameter in here, you can handle it in your application, depending on the data inside this data parameter. If you decide not to handle it, you can just take this out and you're going to fall back to what we had in our previous example. So let's run again so we can show our terminal and kill the application that was running and start it again. Now, if you click, you're going to see that we are just going to see the message, but we don't see the state because we're not handling our parameter here. If we put it back in and say data, okay, and run again, I think we can run again. Now we are going to see the checked state because we are handling that in our slot here I hope this makes sense. And I did the best I could to put in a bunch of understandable comments so that you can really understand what is going on here. Let's comment this out and give you another example using a slider because that's a bit more interesting. 
So let's put our code in the comment block here and we can go down below and put in our code. And again, we are just going to be importing the components we need. Okay, notice that we are importing the Qt namespace, if I can say it like that. We have our slot, which is going to be handling some data, but the slot is going to be responding to a slider being moved. And again, we talked about this in the slides. We have our slider. We want it to be horizontal. If you want, you can make it vertical, but it's not going to be beautiful. We have the minimum set. Again, I know about these methods because I am familiar with Qt for a lot of years, but if you are just getting started, your best bet is to use the documentation to read about all these things. For example, again, if you go back to slider, I think we have that somewhere here. You can see the methods that it has. Okay, so we have a maximum method to get the maximum. We have a method to set the maximum. You can read about all these methods to see things you can do with your UI components in your Qt for Python applications. And again, after we have the slider, we are connecting to the value changed signal and we want our method to be activated whenever the value changes. And whenever the value changes, we are going to grab the current value, which is sent to us as part of this signal. And we will be printing that right here. If this is not making too much sense, maybe we can run the application. So let's go to terminal and run it. And this is going to give us a slider here. Okay. And if we move it, you're going to see things happening here. Again, you see that it was starting at 25. If we move it up, it's going to go to 27, 28, 29. It can go all the way to the maximum, which is 100, or we can bring it all the way to the bottom, which is one, okay? And we can move things around. You can use this component in your application and it is going to work really well. But again, the meat of this lecture here is to let you know how to make connections between signals and slots. And I hope you know how to do this right now. This is really all I had to share in this lecture. I hope you found it useful. We are going to stop here in this one and I will see you in the next lecture.